So this uh, nard is uh, uh, something that would come from India. So this isn't exactly something they can just go down to the local shop and pick up. This is something that was very expensive. Obviously, even Judas Iscariot knew exactly how much this cost. As he said, we could have sold it and gotten 300 days wages. That's, you know, that's pretty much a year's worth of, uh, of, of your salary. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. And Mary just broke open this perfume and poured it all over Jesus' feet. Can only imagine that this was this is chapter twelve. You remember what happened in chapter eleven of John, right? Right, Father. Of course, we know what happened in chapter eleven: the raising of Lazarus, <laughs> the raising of Lazarus. So, Jesus has just raised Mary's brother, and she must have, in so much gratitude and love and, and worship, just gone and anointed his feet with this incredible love. And uh, this nard was so pungent that if, if you had one drop of it put on your skin, it's, the smell remained around you for three or four days. And John must have been there and thinking, he remembered how that smell, as she used a whole liter of this perfume on his feet, must have reeked throughout the whole house. I see it say reeked, I miss probably was a good smell. I can't imagine she would have put a bad smell on him. But what does that mean? That as he's processing into Jerusalem, as he is at the Last Supper, as he's uh, before uh, the high priests and before Pontius Pilate, as he's scourged, that smell is still with him, surrounding him permeating him. The people around him noticing it, and I'm sure it's a reminder in those moments of this love. And Judas, he looks and says, this is such a waste. Of course, he wanted to steal the proceeds, but it's such a waste. But we look that throughout the scriptures, we see how people have wasted for love of God. And so often, I know for myself, we try to hold back. We say, well, I want to save for something later. Thinking about specifically energy. As, as I'm going along and I, you know, I say, oh, if I, if I give everything now, I won't have anything for later. And yet the Lord invites us to waste ourselves for love of Him. Bishop Sheen makes comment about this and he talks about how King David, while he was on campaign, uh, there between, the, between he and his hometown of Bethlehem was the Philistine lines. And he's there and he's reminiscing and he's saying, oh, he could remember the waters of the well of Bethlehem that he grew up with and the taste of those waters. And he says, oh, if I could only taste some of those waters again. And so three of his champions went through the lines, broke through the lines and went to grab some of that water out of the well and brought it back to him. And King David, recognizing the great sacrifice they made, instead of drinking it up, he poured it as a libation to Almighty God as a sacrifice. He says, water purchased at such a price cannot be drunk for myself. It has to be given to Almighty God. He poured it out on the ground. When I first heard that story, I was like, I could imagine the champions going, What? He just went through the lines! And yet, and yet he recognized something greater. They had made the sacrifice and he made a sacrifice. Now think about Jesus as he's on the way of the cross. And he encounters the women of Jerusalem. Here's a man who's been up all night, been unjustly condemned, he's been scourged, he has a crown of thorns, and he's been struggling to carry his cross. And here are these women here, and he reaches out. Even when most of us would say, well, I have nothing left to give. And yet, he gives what little he has. Words of wisdom to these women. Are we willing to waste ourselves for love of Almighty God? 
too often we try to hold in reserve, but when we hold in reserve, anything we cling to, ultimately we lose. The great spiritual saying is, everything that's not given away is lost. I have to keep reminding myself this over and over and over again. Not to try to cling to my own self, my own energy, my own resources, but to pour out for love of God. 